What's going on guys, Jonah here. Today we're gonna to be discussing surge protectors and how the one you're using at home probably isn't working properly. So let's dive into things. So starting off, I'd like to go over what a surge protector isn't. So first off, you know, that old brown or old white extension cable that's really long and has, you know, three outlets on it, that's not a surge protector. That's a extension cable and it's crap. You shouldn't use it for any high-end electronics. Uh, the next is just a standard power strip. Now, this could be considered a surge protector in a way, but more than likely, it's not going to protect against very high surges at all. So anything above just a very low level, is not gonna, it's not going to save anything. It's probably just going to get fried. So definitely watch out for those. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be labeled a surge protector, but just look at the specs on it, and we're going to go over those later, exactly what you need to look for when you're looking for a surge protector. Next is a power conditioner. Now a power conditioner uh, is similar to a surge protector in that it's changing the power, but with power conditioning, it's actually taking dirty power, power that's coming out of the outlets, l normalizing that voltage and sending that to your device or whatever's plugged into it. So typically household voltage varies. So it goes high, goes low, goes high. Uh, power conditioner sends out a steady stream keeping it as level as possible and that's actually going to save the electronics a little bit. It's going to make them last a little bit longer. It's going to uh, you know, hopefully filter out some of that dirty power. And lastly, a UPS or an uninterrupted power supply. Now this has a battery in it so essentially if the power goes out then this battery kicks on and keeps all of your equipment running so it doesn't shut off uh, improperly. So it gives you time to shut everything down, make sure you save all your files and everything uh, in case you know the power doesn't come back on. But uh, a lot of UPSs do include surge protectors on them, but not all of them do, so that is something to watch out for. So let's talk about exactly what a surge protector is and what it does. Um, so to understand that, we need to understand what a surge is. So a surge is a spike in voltage uh, in your power. So uh, frequently referred to surges are uh, lightning strikes. So if a nearby lightning strikes or a lightning strikes your home, strikes the power wires, um, you could see a surge of electricity. Uh, same goes for if you have large appliances. So if you were to turn on a refrigerator or a really big freezer, um, dishwasher, AC units are really bad about it, heaters are bad about it. Um, if that overloads that circuit, then that could cause a surge and it could uh, potentially damage some of your electronics. So that's why we use surge protectors. Now what a surge protector does is that when an incoming voltage is higher than what the clipping voltage is, it's going to reroute that voltage to the ground cable. And now that ground is that little bottom pin on your plugins if you're in America. It's that bottom pin and that routes usually outside directly into the ground. That's why they call it the ground. So if a surge of electricity comes through that's higher than that clipping voltage, it reroutes it back to the ground away from all of your sensitive electronics. Now, one of the uh, unfortunate things about surge protectors is that it's very difficult to know when your surge protector is bad. A lot of them have a little LED light basically saying, uh, yes, you're protected or no, you're not protected. However, studies have shown that these lights are not always accurate. Uh, they don't have a level showing how depleted uh, the surge protector is as far as the, the surge protecting goes. Basically how that works is a surge protector has a max number of joules it can handle. Um, whether that be you know, 600, 2100, 3000, uh, the numbers definitely vary on the quality of the surge protector. But it can handle a certain amount of joules and once it's handled that amount of joules or protected against that much joules, the surge protector will no longer work. Now, uh, in an ideal environment, the LED light on this surge protector would either change to red or turn off, indicating that, okay, this surge protector is no longer working, and uh, if a surge were to come through, your electronics would not be protected. However, that's not the case. A lot of these LED lights, they don't operate properly, or there's no easy, well to, easy way to indicate whether or not the surge protector is working or not. So that's one of the major downsides with these, and this is why we need to constantly change out our, our surge protectors over time. So I would say every three or four years, um, whether you've been hit by electricity or by a lightning strike or something like that, you should probably swap out your most important surge protector. 
So the one going into your home theater equipment uh, with very sensitive and expensive electronics, or you know if you have a computer like this, uh, very expensive setup, you probably want to change out that surge protector every few years just to make sure you're okay. Whether that, that protected light is on or off, uh, definitely a good idea to just swap it out no matter what. Because you want to make sure that it's protected. Because if it's not, uh, in an instant, you could lose a lot of really expensive electronics. You just really don't want that. So now when you're looking to buy a new surge protector, there's a few different specs that we want to look at. The first one being the number of joules that it can handle. Not joules in like, you know, vaping joule like the kids, but joule is in electricity. J-O-U-L-E. And uh, essentially the higher number the joules that uh, a surge protector can handle, the better. So you don't want one that can handle six or 700. You want one that can handle 1,500, 2,000, uh, 2,500. The higher number, the better with this. The next thing we wanna look at is if a product is UL certified or not. Now UL stands for Underwriters Laboratories. And basically this is a company that tests different products and makes sure that they meet a specific set of standards. Now these standards are set pretty high to make sure that these products are durable, they'll last and work the way that they're supposed to, and they're just overall decent products. If a product isn't good and it doesn't work the way that it should, it won't get UL listed. And that's why this is a pretty important spec to kind of look at, especially with elect, uh, you know, a piece of equipment such as a surge protector, just because it's an essential and very important part to your setup. Next is the clamping voltage. Now earlier I believe I said clipping voltage, uh, so I may have screwed that up, but clamping voltage is the maximum amount of volts that can pass through the surge protector before it routes that to the ground, or routes the, the surge or electricity to the ground. So typically the lower number, the better for this. Uh, some of the best surge protectors are known as having around a 400 uh, clamping voltage. And lastly, a lot of these surge protector companies offer some type of insurance for the products that are connected to the surge protector. So for instance, one of the main companies that I use and the surge protectors that I buy is a company known as Panamax. Now Panamax offers a pretty high insurance policy for whatever devices are connected to it. So if anything were, you know, if I had my laptop and a bunch of other equipment plugged into the surge protector, as long as that surge protector is still under warranty and it's still working right, uh, if all of my equipment were to get fried, then Panamax would cover up to a certain amount. Now this varies from company to company, surge protector to uh, surge protector. So definitely look at that and lead it, read into the, the fine print just a little bit so you understand what you're getting. So again, I really want to urge you to replace all of your old surge protectors every once in a while. And it may be even good to the really important stuff, just replace that one and move that older one to something that doesn't have any surge protection at all. And that way you can kind of swap through them a little bit and you can at least reuse it as like a good power strip. Uh, but again, like all the important stuff, the very expensive electronics, make sure you get a new surge protector on those every few years, just to make sure you're okay. Uh, going back to when I worked for my father and his AV installation company, uh, we had one customer where they had a, a really nice garage set up. His TV, like a 70 inch TV mounted to the wall in there, uh, had a cable box, nice speaker system. Everything was connected to a surge protector except the cable box. Uh, he had put that in after we had come in and run some wires and basically that cable box got fried and the HDMI cable connected to the TV that it fried all the HDMI ports on that TV. So essentially they couldn't really use it anymore and they just had to use the smart functions on it. Um, and then again, they couldn't really use the speaker system as it was originally intended. So that's why, you know, it's always important to keep a surge protector on your stuff. We've had many instances of people getting their electronics fried uh, just because they're not using surge protectors. So do it now <laughs> and uh, take some of those notes that I put into this video into consideration when you're buying one, uh, UL certification, jewels, clamping voltage, and the warranty slash uh, you know, uh, replacement policy or uh, refund policy for your equipment. So keep all those four in mind. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you some information on surge protectors. I know it's a little bit of a boring topic, but it is important. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you click like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click subscribe now. I'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.